Laura Dodsworth joins us now. Good morning to you. Good morning. We, I'm we, here finally I'm, with you. I just Julia. say we're unusually sober. I have to be honest with you. We 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 have we have been in a little group of uh, people who fought against lockdown, and there are some regular drinking sessions. So it's nice yeah. to see you it, full sobriety on both sides. It's, it's unusual. Julia, I don't know what you mean. I'm always sober. There's, <laughs> there's normally a Negroni in your hand, but I'm normally <clears throat> moving on. Anyway, yeah. now look, you. I mean, you came to prominence. I think for a lot of us, and you've done a lot of work before but a state of fear mm. your utterly brilliant book about what was going on in terms of how we were manipulated at the beginning of lockdowns even before lockdowns uh, our expectations of what the government should do what the state should do and what we should do to tackle uh, covid um and you expose some extraordinary stuff from talking to those helping to advise and make decisions in government about what was really going on um you've now written another book this is called free your mind the new world of manipulation and how to resist it you've written it with patrick uh, fagan um this i mean it's another extraordinary book about basically <laughs> this manipulation that's going on mm. now we see it we often think it's, it's like advertising it affects other people other people get you know go and buy whatever product it is because of adverts but i'm i'm immune to it because i'm i'm thinking i'm an independent thinker um tell us what's really going on oh uh, well do you know i'm going to go back to what the things you were talking about before you introduced me, it was a really depressing roundup of the state we're in. And I think um, these days, a lot of books that come out, they're very much about the state we're in. Mm. And you either go, oh yes, yes, the, the West is in a terrible mess and um, politics is going down the drain and democracy's a nightmare. And these, But what do I do? What do yeah. I do now? And do you know what? When I wrote A State of Fear, I was probably more guilty than anyone of that because for me, it was an epiphany. I thought, goodness, my freedom is just an illusion. The yeah. government can stop me going at my house, working, having Sitting relationships, <laughs> um, stop my children being educated. It, it stopped everything. It interfered with all the most intimate parts of our life, birth, marriage, death, mm. and people let it. Because people demanded they it. They demanded it. And not just because it was a natural fear of a pandemic, which is completely appropriate, but because it was put on steroids by a government campaign of propaganda, nudging and fear mongering mm. to make people docile and compliant with the draconian lockdown rules. So I really tried to finish that book on a positive note. OK, this is this has happened. This is the ethical situation. What should happen next? Yeah. I'll tell you what happened next, Julia. Nothing. I tried to persuade the government to investigate its own use of behavioural science. Yeah flat line i've written about it non-stop nothing all those things you talked about before you know banks institutions being captured there's this kind of feeling of truth being squashed mm. facts being checked um facts being bigoted and bad every everything and you think well what do we do about it now if society is in free fall like a plane the first thing you have to do is put your oxygen mask on and i realize that actually strong groups strong communities and societies are made of strong individuals so the first thing you have to do is free your mind yeah. so unlike the books that tell you how terrible everything is what patrick and i did what we've got together to do and he's a very talented behavioral scientist is write a book to show people First of all, how you can walk away and mm -hmm. you can step away from brainwashing manipulation. Accept that it's happening because if you think you're invulnerable, yeah. I'm afraid you're probably one of the most vulnerable. There's quite a lot of research that shows, for instance, that academics or left no, I'm, people a, I'm a free thinker. Are, I'm a free thinker, so I, yeah, I, I'm not... This happens to other people. It doesn't happen to me. There, there are so many people who think that. Yeah, and, you know, Jung wrote about this. We, we've referred back quite a lot to the psychologists and the great thinkers mm -hmm. of the World Wars, and, he, you know, he specifically said the person who is most vulnerable mm -hmm. to manipulation is the person who yeah. thinks that they are invulnerable. Exactly. But if this goes back... Even you think like Stanford experiments in terms of yes. people, you know, I would never do anything bad. You know, you put someone in a white coat and say, do something bad. Uh, you, you, you know, that, that the prison experiment at Stanford. People do horrific things. People do awful things mm. if they think that it's the right thing to do if someone tells them or, or if they, it's, it's allowed. I mean, in terms of how you do actually prevent yourself being manipulated, that how, and this isn't this isn't going down a rabbit hole. This isn't going, oh, it's all a big conspiracy, WEF, and, and that's, that's not what this is about. This is no. about 
being, you know, we, we, we see advertisers, we see private companies, we see the government, we see uh, public health, uh, we see, you know, even, you know, just things like, oh, you know, apparently, according to Sadiq Khan, if we see a picture of a wedding cake uh, on a poster when we're on the train, uh, we'll suddenly become fatter. I mean, they, they, they believe that, that what they're doing is working, um, and there's evidence that it is working. We certainly saw with what happened at the beginning of COVID. Um, you sent me the other day a, a, a fantastic little um, little questionnaire, little electronic questionnaire about you know, how to see, you know, how much of a free thinker are you? Uh, and I think the whole group of us did this question. And I think we all got, we, in, terms of, in terms of how likely we were to be manipulated, and we were three out of ten, and we decided that it was, it was largely because we, we are on social media quite a lot. But mm. give us a couple of tips. People sure. listening and watching right now, what can people do to, A, realise that they are being manipulated and mm. nudged to do things, and B, how to stop it? OK, so the data on how much information we receive is hot, hotly contested. But one of the last figures showed that people get the equivalent of 174 newspapers' worth of information in their head every day. We cannot deal with it all, which is why everyone's competing very hard to get your attention they do it using emotion um, three basic things you can do first of all is you step away you step away from the magic show if you do not want to be deceived by the magician's trick that involves spending less time on media and social media the second thing is forewarned you must understand that your brain is a battlefield yeah. but you're the target everyone's yeah. competing for your attention and to persuade you yeah. and there's nothing wrong with some forms of persuasion if I tell you to have a nice day yeah. I really do want you to have a nice day we want to persuade our children to learn to read yeah. but some of this persuasion is persuasion you may want to filter out. You know, you should you should be able to drop the drawbridge to your brain and decide what you let in and what you don't. The next thing is learning the techniques. And give you an example of some things that are happening at the moment. Yep. So you will no doubt be aware there's a lot about extreme heat and weather-related emergency. I think in you'll find humanity is all about to die if you we're, check more closely. Yeah, I mean, last time I checked, it was going to turn into Siberia in this country, but now we're going to burn. Mm -hmm. But notice that it's relentless. Now, this is called the truth illusory effect. You know, psychologists know that if you repeat the information often enough, yeah. even though you don't think you believe it to start with, if you keep seeing images of uh, cars bursting into flames or brown scrub after a wildfire, you'll start believing it's true. So the sheer repetition, turn it off. Yeah. The next thing you can do is you can argue with it. You can have counter arguments in your head. And the third thing you can do is bolster your identity. Tell yourself that it just won't work. Another thing you'll see a lot in the media is called trigger stacking. Mm -hmm. So they layer one fear on top of another. Yeah. A great one I saw the other week was parasites. Oh, we don't like parasites. We don't want them on our bodies. We yeah. don't want our homes. These parasites, Julia, can spread a disease to you. Uh -huh. Then that yeah. disease can spread from humans to humans and it's coming here it's moving north because of climate change yeah. so they lay yeah. them one on top and, and of the again, other and this is the thing it's it, fear fear look fear sells in the media if it sells on social media but also fear is what gets what we are programmed as human beings as animals uh, to to respond to fear and that's what works look i, I wish we could talk about this all day uh, it's a fantastic book I mean, and, and well lionel shriver has called it a skeptics charter thorough and entertaining and you write beautifully you communicate so beautifully free your mind the new world of manipulation and how to resist it with Laura Dodsworth and Patrick Fager. Thank you so much for joining us.